Welcome to Preparing for an Interview, presented by Access Employment. In this workshop, you will learn how to effectively prepare for an interview, how to create sample answers for standard interview questions, how to anticipate questions you will have in an interview, and how to negotiate an employment agreement. Interviews are different in different countries, different cultures, different sectors, and even different companies. However, the purpose of an interview is the same, regardless of how the interview is conducted. An interview is an exchange of information between an employer, or a representative of an employer, and you, to see if you match the position that needs to be filled. As the person being interviewed, or the candidate, you have the following goals. To obtain information about the job and the organization. To market yourself, your skills and experience, which are relevant to the position. To communicate the value you will bring to the company. And to determine whether the job is suitable for you and whether you want it. The interviewer, on the other hand, has these goals or objectives for the interview. To promote the organization and attract the best possible candidate to gather information about the candidate, to assess how well the candidate's qualifications match the job requirements, and to determine whether the candidate is a good fit for the position and the organization. Both the candidate and the interviewer are looking for good fit. Let's take a closer look at this concept since it is at the core of the outcome of an interview. Good fit means that who you are as the candidate fits with what the company wants from an employee. This means that you have the work and professional experience, education, qualifications, and technical skills required for the position. You have effective communication skills. You are enthusiastic, motivated, and interested in the work. You have the grooming and appearance suitable for the position. Your salary expectations are in line with what can be offered. It also means that your value system is aligned with the values of the company, and it means that you will fit in with the company culture. Here is another way to look at what interviewers are trying to determine through the interview process. First, they want to know that you can do the job. In other words, do you have the required ability? Second, they want to know that you have the right attitude. In other words, are you interested in the work? Are you interested in working for that company? Companies don't want employees who just want a paycheck at the end of the day. They want employees who actually care about the work that the company does. Third, they want to know that you are easy to supervise and that you can be trained to do the work the way the company wants it done. No manager wants to take on an employee who takes excessive time, effort, and energy to supervise. And no manager wants an employee who can't learn how to do things the way they need to be done. This is called manageability. Finally, the company wants to know if you are committed to the job and the company. In other words, once you are hired, will you stay? It takes a lot of time and money to hire a new employee. Employers don't want to go through the hiring process, make a selection, and then have to go through the whole process again if the person hired leaves shortly after starting. Companies are looking for employees in whom they can invest the time to train and then get a return on that training. All interviews follow the same basic structure, regardless of the field, company, or type of job. If you understand this basic structure, you won't be surprised by what takes place during the interview. Here is the basic structure of an interview. 1. Opening the interview. Two. Sharing general information. Three, sharing specific information. Four, your turn to ask questions. And five, closing the interview. The interview begins similarly to any conversation with greetings and small talk initiated by the interviewer. Some standard greetings might be, it's nice to meet you. I appreciate you taking the time to meet with me. You may want to engage in small talk about the weather, your commute to the office, or the office environment. Remember to stay positive. The purpose of this stage of the interview is to put the candidate at ease, establish rapport, and find a comfortable level of communication. To prepare for this stage of the interview, 
brush up on your greetings and your small talk. Also, make sure that you have a good handshake. Let me begin by telling you a little more about Scotiabank. At Scotiabank, we are a global community of Scotia bankers. We are inspired by strong leadership across the organization. A culture of inclusion is the heart of our global community of Scotia bankers. We are committed to something bigger than ourselves. We have a willingness to listen to each other and we build from within. Hi, my name is Nina. I have four years of customer service experience in the banking domain. After graduating from university with a bachelor's degree in commerce, I started my career as a bank teller, progressing into my current position in the loan and mortgages department. I have an in-depth understanding of loan and mortgage policies. I pride myself on having excellent listening skills with a proven ability to assess client needs and to present solutions that match those needs. My analytical skills and great attention to detail allow me to see the root cause of the problem and to resolve any challenging situations in an effective manner. I have a proven track record of successful performance in a fast-paced, multi-project environment. At the second stage of an interview, the interviewer provides general information about the organization and the job. The interviewer then asks questions so that the candidate can share general information about himself or herself. This stage of the interview is like a movie trailer. It provides a bit of information to introduce what the topic is and gets all parties motivated to continue talking. Let's listen to a sample of an employer sharing general information and then a candidate. At the third stage of an interview, the questioning gets much more detailed, directed, and targeted. The interviewer asks very specific questions to determine if the candidate is a good fit for the position being filled and for the company. At the fourth stage of an interview, it is your turn to ask specific questions about the organization. You should be prepared for this stage by having at least two or three questions already thought out that you want to ask about the company. At the fifth and final stage of an interview, the interviewer summarizes and clarifies the information you shared and discussed in the interview. The interviewer will tell you when a decision on filling the position will be made and how that decision will be communicated. The interviewer and the candidate agree on the next steps. There are several types of interview formats. The majority of interviews are in a one-on-one -on -one format where there is one candidate and one interviewer. The other format is a search committee or interview panel. In this format, there is one candidate and multiple interviewers. This format is used for interviews for high-level positions. Occasionally, you will find yourself in a group interview. In this format, there are multiple candidates and multiple interviewers. The interviewers facilitate a discussion like a focus group. This format is used to assess the group interaction skills of the candidates. Now that we have covered the structure of an interview and the different formats, it is time to dig down a little deeper to look at the actual questions you will be asked in an interview. There are four different types of interview questions that interviewers use to gather the information they need in order to make a hiring decision. These question types are general, personal attributes, technical, and behavioral. General questions are used to open an interview. They allow the interviewer to gather background information on you to get a general sense of your education and work experience. Personal attribute questions allow the interviewer to explore who you are as a person. Technical questions are used to determine if you have the specific technical skills required for the position. Finally, behavioral questions are used to determine how you react in specific situations. My greatest achievement has been to design and implement a new sales ledger system. Bringing it in ahead of time and improving our debtor's position significantly, saving the company $5,000 per month in interest. Since arriving in Canada, I've had a great deal of exposure to Canadian professionals and the workplace culture. I completed the Leadership Connections program at Access Employment, where I was exposed to many working professionals in the form of facilitators, speakers, advisors, and mentors. Through the Speed Mentoring Program, I've had the opportunity to visit several different corporate offices as well as the Toronto Region Board of Trade. The Mentoring Program gave me the opportunity to ask questions about the Canadian working style and witness the types of culture and exchanges that are typical to a Canadian workplace. 
I feel confident that I'll fit in here. In my research, I've learned that this position typically pays between $45,000 and $55,000. I'm really interested in working for your company, and I have the right skills and qualifications for the job. I'm prepared to negotiate a salary in that range. Is this in line with the salary you're offering for this job? Let's take a more detailed look at each of these question types in turn, starting with general questions. General questions serve as an introduction to who you are and what you have accomplished so far in your career. When answering general questions, describe your qualifications, career history, and range of skills. You should also emphasize steps in your career and skills that are most relevant to the job when you are answering general questions. We will look at some of the most commonly used general questions and suggest ideas for how to answer them. Here is how you might approach each answer. What have your achievements been to date? Select an achievement that is work-related and fairly recent. Identify the skills you used in the achievement and quantify the benefit it had to the company. What Canadian experience do you have? Although this question is illegal in some instances, many employers may find a way to ask this anyways. Give examples from a previous job that had similarities to the work environment for the position. Find similarities in business culture, tools used, software, codes and standards, for example. Indicate a willingness and openness to learning about a new work environment. What are your salary expectations? Research the salary for similar positions. Always provide a range, i.e. $40,000 to $50,000. Demonstrate flexibility and a willingness to be compensated in other ways if necessary. Example, vacation days or benefits package. You seem overqualified for this position. Why are you interested in the role? Indicate what you feel you will learn in the position and what you will enjoy about the work. Are you happy with your career to date? This question is really about your self-esteem, confidence, and career aspirations. The answer must be yes, followed by a brief explanation as to what it is about your career so far that's made you happy. If you have hit a career plateau, or you feel you are moving too slowly, then you must qualify your answer. Now, let's listen to a few sample answers for some of the questions. My work style is extremely flexible. At any time, I'm working on multiple projects with multiple teams. That requires me to be adaptable to the many timelines and priorities. I am very aware of deadlines and achieve my best results when I am busy and have some pressure from a deadline. All of my work requires collaboration, so I like to keep communication open so that I know where I am at any point in a project is in line with the team and the wider goals. I am a perfectionist, so big picture thinking like that is something I've developed in my past role. While it doesn't come naturally to me, it's a skill that I know I can call upon when the project requires. Personal attribute questions are the second type of interview question you can expect to be asked. Personal attribute questions are used to uncover who you are as a person, including your professional values, ethics and principles, your natural strengths, weaknesses, talents, interests, passions, and your work style. The interviewer then determines if you are a good fit for the organization. Here is how you might approach each answer. What are your weaknesses? Demonstrate your self-awareness. Talk about a specific weakness and your strategy to improve it. What is your working style? Describe the key qualities that you bring to a workplace, a team, and your work. Illustrate through examples how these qualities contribute to your success. What key principles or values do you apply to your work? What principles do you bring to the workplace? Principles are beliefs that inform the way you approach life, work, and interactions with others. Employers look for employees with like or similar principles. For example, belief in honest communication, valuing hard work, setting priorities, and common goals for a team. Now let's listen to a sample answer for one of the questions. Technical questions are the next type of interview question you can expect to be asked. 
Technical questions are used to determine if you have the required technical skills for the position. Even if you are not applying for what you consider to be a technical job, you will still be asked this type of question because every job has technical aspects to it. Here are some examples. What computer programs can you use? What communication technology can you use? What construction tools can you use? What construction equipment can you use? Tell me how to use this equipment. Tell me the challenges with using this equipment. Technical questions are very specific to a job or field. To answer technical questions, be detailed and specific to demonstrate that you are familiar with the technical aspects of the position. Illustrate your answers with examples of how and when you use the technical tool or skill in the workplace. Behavioral questions are the final type of question. It is this question type that most candidates find most challenging. Interviewers place a lot of importance on how candidates will behave on the job when they make their hiring decisions. Ideally, interviewers would like to be able to see you on the job before making a hiring decision, but since this is not practical, behavior questions are the next best option. It is therefore important for you as the candidate to be able to accurately convey how you behave in the workplace. There are two types of behavioral questions, hypothetical questions and past behavioral questions. Both types of behavioral questions allow the interviewer to get a sense of how you will act and react in different situations that occur in the company or with the job. Hypothetical questions ask you to speculate or predict how you would behave in a specific situation. Hypothetical questions all have the word if in them. Here are some examples. What would you do if you were up against a deadline you couldn't meet? If you were managing X type of project, what kind of approach would you take? When answering hypothetical questions, try to refer back to a real situation that you were actually in. Here is how you might answer a hypothetical question using the first example question. If I were up against a deadline I couldn't meet, I would first make a realistic assessment of what I could get done by the deadline. Then I would communicate this with my supervisor, starting with what I could get done. With the parts of the project that I couldn't get done, I would indicate when those parts could realistically get completed. I did this on a recent project in which unforeseen circumstances caused delays on the last component of the project. My supervisor was really pleased with my realistic evaluation of when the deadlines could be met. Past behavioral questions are questions that require you to share exactly what happened in specific situations in your past work experience. The assumption behind past behavioral questions is that past behavior is the best predictor of future behavior. Here are some example past behavioral questions. Describe a time when. Give me an example of a situation when. Tell us about a situation when you. Here is what an answer using STAR sounds like. The past behavioral question is, Describe a time when you had to meet a really tight deadline. Here is the response. We had to write the proposal from beginning to end overnight. This is the situation. I identified the strengths of the staff in my department and delegated specific responsibilities. This is the ownership. We split into small groups. I moved from group to group, keeping the teams on track and giving them breaks when necessary. This is the action. After working all night, we had the proposal in by the deadline of 8 a.m. We won the contract. This is the result. Here are some additional suggestions in order to help you prepare for behavioral questions, both hypothetical and past behavioral. Identify six to eight examples from your past experience where you demonstrated top behaviors and skills that employers typically seek. Think of examples that will illustrate your best-selling points. Half of your accomplishments should be totally positive, such as accomplishments or meeting goals. The other half should be situations that started out negatively, but either ended positively or you made the best of the outcome. Vary your examples. Use examples from internships, classes and school projects, activities, team participation, community service, hobbies and work experience. 
Whenever possible, quantify your results. Numbers always impress employers. And use fairly recent examples. Some companies specify that candidates give examples of behaviors demonstrated within the last year. Most candidates think that interviewers can ask whatever questions they want in an interview. This is actually not the case. There are some questions that are illegal for interviewers to ask. The Ontario Human Rights Code protects people against discrimination. It forbids employers to ask certain kinds of questions in a job interview. Unless it is a reasonable requirement for the job, the interviewer or employer cannot ask a candidate about his or her age, gender, sexual orientation, disability, race, or color. Even though there are illegal interview questions, employers may ask these questions anyway, either mistakenly or knowingly. You as the candidate then have to decide how you are going to respond. You have three options to consider. Option one, you can tell the interviewer clearly and directly that it is an illegal question and that you won't answer it. The challenge with this option is that it will lessen your chances of securing the job. You don't want to take this option if you feel the illegal question was not intentional and you feel this is a company you would like to work for. If you feel the illegal question was intentional, then you probably don't want to work for this organization anyway. So use this option if you have decided you are not interested in the job. Option two, you can answer the question. If you don't feel that you will be discriminated against by answering the question and you feel the employer has a genuine interest in you as a candidate, then this is a good option to take. The downside is you are taking on the risk of being discriminated against should the employer not want your particular profile. And option three, you can take a few seconds to think about and determine the underlying concern the interviewer has in asking the question. Then, rather than answering the question directly, address this underlying concern. For example, if the interviewer asks you how old you are, but you feel that the underlying concern is whether you have the physical strength to do the job, then you can answer, I'm in really good shape and can handle a physically strenuous job. One final thing to note about interview questions is that all of the questions should not come from the interviewer. As the candidate, you can and should ask questions of your own during the interview process. Most interviewers allow a few minutes at the end of the interview for candidate questions. You can also ask questions throughout the interview process if they arise during the conversation. One of the reasons it is important to ask questions during the interview is that your questions tell the interviewer that you are interested in the job. Part of your interview preparation should be preparing two or three questions about the company or the job that you will ask in the interview. Understanding and anticipating the interview questions that you will be asked is a really important skill for securing employment. For each job that you apply to, use the job posting to determine what general questions will the interviewer ask, what personal attribute questions will the interviewer ask, what technical questions will the interviewer ask, and what behavioral questions will the interviewer ask. Once you have determined the questions you will be asked, prepare answers for each of these questions. Then practice the answers out loud. Even better, practice the answers with a friend or colleague and get his or her feedback. Finally, you should also prepare a list of questions you will ask the interviewer. In order to be successful in the interview stage of the job search process and secure employment, you need to do a lot of work. We've already looked at some of this work when we were discussing how you can prepare to answer interview questions. But there is much more than this that you need to do. We will look at your interview work or tasks in terms of what you should do before the interview, during the interview, and after the interview in order to ensure you are successful. The first thing you want to do before an interview is to research the company. Use the internet and your network of contacts to find out about the company history, products, and services. If possible, you should also find out about the management style and the company culture. Find out the names and position titles of those who will be interviewing you. And finally, you should find out the exact location of the interview and how to get there to ensure that you arrive on time. Once you have finished your research, you need to move on to the rehearsal step. This is the step, still before your interview, in which you get ready to answer interview questions. 
Make a list of questions you anticipate for this specific interview. Prepare the answers to these questions. Practice your answers with someone who is familiar with the field, be it a friend, colleague, or other acquaintance, and practice your answers in front of a mirror. Before you leave the house, make sure you have the following with you. Several copies of your resume, a list of professional references, a list of questions you have about the company and position, copies of your credentials and licenses, a portfolio of work, if applicable, and paper and pen. It is a good idea to prepare all of this the night before the interview so that you don't have to worry about it. Also, before you leave the house, make sure you are appropriately dressed. Dress one step above what you would actually wear on the job. Dress in clothing and shoes that are clean, neat, and in good condition. Pay attention to personal hygiene. Avoid wearing too much makeup, nail polish, or jewelry. And don't wear perfume or colognes. It is a good idea to prepare what you will wear the night before the interview so that you are not scrambling to make wardrobe decisions at the last minute. Now let's move on to what you should keep in mind during the actual interview. Smile when greeting people. Make eye contact with each person, if there is more than one interviewer. Use the interviewer's name. Shake each person's hand. Speak with confidence. Speak at an appropriate volume and speed. If the interviewer says, pardon me, more than once, it usually means you are not speaking loudly enough or that you are speaking too quickly. Adjust your volume and speed in this situation. All these behaviors will tell the interviewer that you are professional, personable, and confident. When you are answering the questions during the interview, keep the following in mind. Be sure you understand a question before you answer it. Ask for clarification if you need it. Take a few seconds after hearing each question to formulate your answer. Think before you speak. You don't have to rush into your answers. Keep your answers brief, under two minutes for each answer. If the interviewer wants more detail, he or she will ask for it. Do not keep talking until the interviewer interrupts you. Keep your eye on the interviewer as you speak. If the interviewer's attention wanders while you are speaking, that is a clue that your answer is too long. As the interview draws to a close, remember to do the following. Provide a list of professional references that the interviewer can contact in order to get more information about you. Ask for the next steps in the hiring process and the timeframes for these steps. Make sure that the interviewer does not need anything else from you. Restate your interest in this position and thank the interviewer or interviewers for their time. Right after the interview, as soon as you get home, take some time to assess how the interview went. Make note of the areas in which you need to improve for your next interview. Also make note of the things you did really well that you want to make sure you do again. After you have reviewed your interview performance, you have one more post-interview task to complete, and that is the follow-up letter or email. It is professional to say thank you to the interviewer for his or her time. Sending a follow-up letter or email also shows that you are motivated to get the position. Finally, Use the follow-up letter or email as an additional opportunity to repeat your key message about who you are or as an opportunity to offer new thoughts or ideas about what you can contribute to the company. Now we are at the stage where you have had a successful interview and the company is offering you the position. Before you actually start work at your new job, you need to negotiate your employment agreement with the company. This agreement spells out the conditions under which you will work for the company. First, you should discuss the financial compensation. Make sure you have answers to the following questions. Does the position pay an hourly rate or a salary? If the position pays on an hourly rate, is overtime paid? Are there any bonuses or other financial incentives? If yes, how are they earned? How often are paychecks issued? When does the financial compensation increase and how are these increases decided upon? Next, you should discuss the benefits that are provided. Make sure you have the answers to the following questions if they are relevant. How many vacation days are allowed? When does the number of vacation days increase? Are there sick days? If yes, how many? Are there medical and dental benefits? Are there long-term disability and life insurance benefits? Is the position covered by workman's compensation? 
Then move on to what the terms of employment are. Clarify the following. What is the start date? Is there a finish date? Is it a contract? Is there a probationary period? If yes, for how long? How can your employment be terminated? How much notice will you receive if your employment is terminated? Is there severance pay if your employment is terminated? Is there a confidentiality, non-disclosure, or non-compete agreement that you need to sign? Finally, make sure that you are clear on the responsibilities of the position for which you are being hired. Clarify the following. What is the job title? What are the responsibilities of the job? Who do you report to? What are the work hours? Is there any flexibility in the work hours? How is your job performance evaluated? And how often is your job performance evaluated? In some situations, you will be able to negotiate some of your employment terms, such as salary or benefits. In these situations, you will need to draw upon your negotiating skills. Keep the following tips in mind when you negotiate your employment agreement. Always know your bottom line. Know what you will and will not accept in terms of financial compensation, benefits, and employment conditions. Start discussions about the employment agreement verbally. A verbal discussion is more fluid than a written communication. If you have any questions about the employment situation, ask them. Once everything has been agreed upon, then move on to a written agreement. For some positions, a lot of the information that you need to clarify about your employment will be provided in a standard employment agreement. Or the company may have an employee handbook that they will refer you to. However, it is always a good idea to review this information verbally so that you have a very clear understanding of what you are signing on for. Communicate professionally. Be positive, polite, and friendly. In all discussions, think before you react. Keep your discussions objective and keep your emotions under control. Have an exit strategy in place. Know when you will walk away from the discussion and the position. And know what the going rate for this type of work is and know your value in the labor market. You might end up in a position in which you have more than one employer interested in having you work for them. This is a great position to be in because it tells you that your skills and experience have value in the labor market. However, it can also be a bit stressful to decide which of the employment offers is the best one to take. Here are some tips to keep in mind if you receive multiple employment offers. Don't allow yourself to be pressured into making a quick decision. Get all of the information you need before you make a decision. Be honest with yourself about which position you really want. Don't take a position because other people say you should take it. Don't just make your decision based upon money. Think about all aspects of employment, including other benefits, work hours, company culture, and opportunity for advancement. Once you make a decision about which employment offer to accept, don't burn your bridges with the employer or employers whose offer you turn down. Let them know that it was a difficult decision to make. Also let them know that if things change in the future, you would like to be able to contact them again. We hope that you have enjoyed Preparing for an Interview presented by Access Employment. Now that you have completed this workshop, here are your next steps to put into practice everything you have learned about interviewing and securing employment. Complete the following. 1. Write a list of general, personal attribute, technical, and behavioral questions that you can expect in an interview for the type of position that you are interested in. 2. Write sample answers for each of these questions. 3. Then practice, practice, and practice your answers. Practice in front of a mirror and ask a friend or colleague to listen to you and give feedback. And four, identify and research some companies that you are interested in working for. For more information or job search support, please visit www.accessemployment.ca.